All right, it's Jordan Lee with you Wednesday night, and this is a beautiful midweek treat we've got coming on. New music coming from the man that I consistently have hair envy for, James Bay is here. Hello. <laughs> um, hey, man. Right now, as we, view, <laughs> as we see each other, you, uh, I've got a hair envy for you. That's probably the best quiff I've ever known. Oh, well, I mean, it is very much a lockdown situation. I'm feeling it all day long, <laughs> mate. It's wicked. It's well cool. But I will say, I mean, the hair envy, it was, I remember when you cut your hair as well. And I think a part yeah. of me was like, I need to shed one tear and then I need to <laughs> move on with my life because it's too much. It's too much. Man, it's so, it's, it, I, I'll say this, I'll say it like this as well, without meaning to, I suppose, be insensitive. It was fun because to cut, to sort of cut my hair and change things in, in, in that respect um, for many reasons, but particularly because recently like in the last couple of weeks leading up to releasing this single we were i was posting some sort of throwback videos to a gig i did in 2018 a solo acoustic gig i did where i've got very short hair i'm just playing acoustic guitar um and there's loads of people in the comments going bring back the short hair where's it going what's the deal <laughs> i promise you obviously when i when i first cut my hair everybody's just like oh no he's got his hair what's going on it's just it's, you can't win it's fun i like it so you've got to do it. it you've got to do it once and then it's done and then you can do it <laughs> after i just mean even all the comments it's just like sure okay let's just let this <laughs> um so how are you how have the last few months been how's have you been holding up how's your year started it, it, I'm okay, you know. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad to say that me and and, and my sort of wider gang are, are good, which is nice to be able to say, given how mad the world has been the last four or five, three or four months. But uh, the year sort of started well. Um, I was writing and writing. Um, one conversation led to another, and I found out there was a great, uh, amazing producer in Nashville, Tennessee, called Dave Cobb, who was excited to. Well, he just was like. Can we, is there a chat we can have? Maybe we can work together at some point. So January carried on writing, February carried on writing. And towards the end of February, I, I, I finished up with writing and the chats with Dave went well. So we started work in Nashville um, in late February, early March on album three um, in an amazing studio that I'll tell you all about later or something. But, um, you know, all of this stuff was going on. I was making the record and we got most of it, not all of it finished. I got back at the end of March lockdown began the, the world fell on its head a bit um which is a shame but um but and, and of course in all that there was a moment where the music industry as a whole as did every other industry when how do we go forward can we <laughs> and you know the music industry found its way which i'm very glad for because it's meant i can put some new music out that's the thing i mean 2020 is maybe not the way that any of us thought was going to happen but it is happening you've got a new kind of you... ways you are working on an album in Nashville, the home of country music, the home of like legends. What is that like? It's a lot of fun. I, I, I didn't know I'd ever be going back there because I actually made my first album there as well. Oh my God, okay. Um, and that was a, 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 an amazing experience um, of sort of one thing leading to another and suddenly I'm in Nashville because there was another fantastic producer. There is another fantastic producer out there called Jakir King who... Um, kind of put his hand up at the beginning when nobody knew who I was and said I like these demos and I'd love to try working with James so that and he based in Nashville so that led me there but on this occasion I went and it is such a intense like red hot kind of hub for all kinds of music famously and historically country music um I so I went there and Dave who Dave Cobb is a great producer he made uh, among many other great records he was responsible for the soundtrack to the uh, A Star Is Born movie. Ooh. Uh, big music, we like mm. that. But um, uh, he also, there's a great artist called Brandy Carlisle who I recommend everyone checks out. They've made her last record, amazing music. Anyway, we worked in um, RCA, which is the uh, RCA Studio A. There's RCA Studio A and Studio B. Studio B is a little room that's very famous historically for, um, that's where Re uh, Elvis recorded a lot of his biggest songs which is an insane, there's a tour, there's like a tour for that room. <laughs> but the room I was in is the bigger room. And uh, so we could get like a big band in there and stuff and sort of stretch our legs a bit. And um, when I got there and I was sort of spending my first afternoon with Dave, just hanging out and getting to know the space, 
um, he was talking about the place. He said, you know, there's, there's been some real exciting stuff go on in this room over the years. He said in the late seventies, about where you're standing, he said, um, all in the space of three hours on an afternoon, Dolly Parton stood there and sang, I will always love you and Jolene. And that was kind of the rest of her life sorted. Wow. And I was like, okay, sweet. No pressure. Let's go. Let's make a record. <laughs> this is it for me. I was, I don't know. I, I, I mean, the sweat pouring off me at that point was intense. God, that is, is a little bit of pressure. But I mean, I need to congratulate you on the most delicious track name I have <laughs> ever heard. Chew on my heart. It is like so visual. It's unbelievable. I want to eat it, but I don't want to eat it. Do you know there what I mean? Go. There you go. No, I'm, oh, that means so much. I, um, something like that comes up. We, what can I tell you about that? Two things. Really, one's about the song, one's more just about those words. I, I sort of sat down to write, had my guitar, start strumming some chords, singing some melodies, la la la, trying to find a way in as writers do. And you sort of sing sounds and vowel sounds. And the phrase just formed out of thin air, just like that. Um, you can't kind of, there's no equation to create these moments. If they happen, they happen. If they don't, they don't. And I just sort of said, whatever happens like going forward, I'm writing that. I don't know what it's about yet. And that, it happens like that sometimes. It's rare for me, but it happens like that sometimes with songwriting. And, and something, a phrase arrives and it needs to be written into a song. Mm. Sure, my heart for me is like the first time I heard that Kings of Leon were releasing a song called Sex on Fire. I was like, Sex on Fire sounds horrific. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Sex shouldn't be on fire, but I want to know what the song sounds like. I want to listen to that. So I enjoyed that element of sort of intrigue and surprise that it had. But I, I, I wrote a song about called Chill My Heart, about being madly in love um, and wanting somebody so selfishly, wanting more and more and more of that person. Uh, so that, so, and so it was born, I suppose. Is, when you think of that image, do you think of like a cute love heart or do you think of the gory heart that like comes out of a pig or whatever? Like yeah, it's, bleeding? More, it's, it's more the latter. It's more of the, <laughs> the, the sort of, yeah, it's more that a sort of intense experience, whatever that is in our heads when we hear those words. And mm. I enjoy the sort of exhilarating kind of high energy atmosphere that that has something about that is, is, is what was supposed to be when I, when I wrote the song. As soon as you hear it as well, and, and in the song, it's like you, you feel, I, I just feel my heart going a bit like, oh, I feel yeah. like someone's like nutting on it. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm all right with all of that. That's, that's as, as, as hoped for. Yeah, it's done its job. This, so this is the first taste of the album that we're getting. Was this the first for you when you were crafting this album? No, um, this came, this one came towards the end of 2019 and I had started writing in uh, probably sort of spring, so to, more towards the beginning of 2019. I'd done a tour in America, loads of fun. Um, and I, I was sort of, I was promoting an EP called Over oh Messy Mind that I put out and sort of thinking about those songs a bit more. And then I, I kind of got home from that tour. I had a few weeks and then I went on tour with Ed Sheeran, which is a whole experience. That's a whole mad thing. My God. Um, opening for Ed is exciting for anybody. Opening for any artist, but in this case, particularly Ed, in football stadiums all around Europe is unforgettable. Um, I say football stadiums. The biggest shows on that tour were two nights in a place called Hockenheim in Germany. Um, at a racetrack, that was what he filled. He filled a racetrack and all the surrounding ground uh, on, the, on the first night with 100,000 people and on the second night with 102,000 people. And it was one of the only gig experiences I've ever known where you lose sight of people. They're just, you know there's someone there, but you can't really make it out. It's just mess. That's, that's like festival level amount of people. And, yeah. and it, they're coming to see this one dude and then yeah. you're with that entire thing and you're like, here we go. This is happening. Oh my God. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, it was, it was, um, uh, it was, I mean, it was, the, the, it was wild. Like the experience of just getting to watch one man and his acoustic guitar up on stage every night is the, is the, is the, is the, is the sort of wow thing that it's always been talked about as, and I've known, you know, I've known Ed a little bit for a little while and I've seen him along the way. 
doing his thing in smaller scale and then obviously last year on tour in bigger scale and it's always breathtaking stuff you know it's really it's remarkable to sort of watch and the reaction and the connectivity with the crowd it's everything that it's talked about as being um anyway so i i, I was writing i started writing then and i start writing all these songs and i usually I know something about these songs now that I only realised after lockdown had started, and so quite a long time after I finished writing all these songs, I just go, I go naturally to a place of sort of heartbreak. I go, whether it's my heartbreak or someone else's, I, negative emotions feed their way into songs without meaning to be sort of blase about it. Like, it, that, it happens more readily from, mm. from, from the song, songwriter's perspective. Um, but I've realised as I listen back to these songs, I, I hear all this sort of joy and this, this uplifting kind of positivity and, and almost sort of euphoria at times, even in something like Chill My Heart. And I found out, oh, wow. Even as a very private person who doesn't sort of talk so publicly about the stuff, you know, my home life and that, mm -hmm. I've, I've written all this music a kind of as a tribute to the 13 years that I've been in the same relationship. I've been wow. with my girlfriend. I like your eyebrow just popped up. That's great. <laughs> um, I, I, I've been in this relationship. Yeah, we were sort of kids really when, when, when we got together and, and my girlfriend in that respect has been a, it sounds cheesy, but it's the sort of that rock, you know, that, that, that grounding kind of presence. Um, and I realize now, more properly and clearly and fully what these songs are and what they're about and what this album is and I, I love it I'm, I'm not gonna lie uh, even if I was and, and have been and still am you know to, to many degrees and in many ways the private person I'm like this deserves to be recognized and honored because this is this relationship has got me through everything but you can always share things without telling everyone the full story. And I think that is the power of your songwriting, especially like you can, you so can do that. You are laying those emotions down, whether they be positive or negative. And sure. that is when people take that on board themselves. People might read into your stuff, but it is, it's that here's what you've got. Here's what you're getting. And, and that's, that's you. That's what you're sharing. Absolutely. And I think I realized, you know, to be private is to be kind of, I like to think understandably sort of um, defensive, I suppose. And I realize that, you know, it's a mad world, but it's not necessarily a big bad world. And, and people, um, we all like to relate and, and to, to, to be social. I mean, boy, are we realizing this throughout all this lockdown. And we like to connect. And, and at the very least, if these songs and what they're saying connect to other people to each other or whatever, or maybe they connect, feel like they're connected more to me. It's, I'm, I'm great with all of that. I'm not like some like Scrooge character, of course. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm up for like hanging out and talking about this stuff. And yeah. I've just through writing these songs realized that I am that more than I, than I knew. If that makes sense. Beautiful. Beautiful. You should write songs. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> That's, I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this. I, I love the fact we've got this single, we've got this taste, we've got the album coming. Yeah. I mean, also I can't have you on this without, mentioning the fact that so i went to dance school which is very random and now i'm on the radio bit weird That's cool. but the the met when when they were like oh you're gonna chat to james bay i was like so weird because i remember doing a little contemporary dance to hold back the river <laughs> way Amazing. back when like Amazing. five years ago and i'm just oh, like it's wow. so funny you know when you have those moments where you're like in a dance studio you're just doing yeah. a little thing and then you're like imagine that imagine like you oh, connect man. on a different level and that i and and oh. funny enough like obviously you know, it's years and years of dance school and you have different songs every day, but that, that one sticks out and you're like, it's oh, that connection you have to your songs. That's cool, man. I, I appreciate that a lot. And I, I'm, I'm amazed that it, it, it reaches somebody who feels compelled to dance to, to it, you know, a song like that. And, that. and it means so much to sort of feel like there's another dimension to, the, to what the song has to give and, and then it, that it could be inspiring to somebody who's dancing or you know maybe it's something else someone's painting or whatever but in your case dancing and that's very cool to find uh, out do you know what I'll, I'll take your guitar lessons that you'll be doing on instagram and we'll get into a studio and i'll show you some some weird shapes 
<laughs> now I'm talking. Now we're talking because I've got two left feet up to this point. So let's get busy. Let's do Everybody it. can dance. Everybody can. James, it is a, it's a pleasure to meet you, albeit over the internet. I feel like we're back in MSN days. and yeah, It's weird. But but it's, <laughs> it's better than nothing. It's, it's, and, and it's lovely. I, I think it's pretty cool to, to be able to do it. And it's great to, great to chat. Yeah, great to chat too. And you know, when we're we're all back doing normal things, and when you're doing shows again, we'll definitely meet that way. And um, it's going to be that. wicked. It's going to be great. Yeah, man. Nice. Well, hopefully, I'll see you at a show. Let's do those again at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, come on now. Not now. We're still a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not now. Um, thank you so much, James.